Hey guys, it's Rogway here and today we're doing another video tutorial and today we are looking at a couple of different interesting and probably useful techniques. Uh, we're looking at curves, we're looking at lens corrections, we're looking at selective focus and we're looking at rendered lighting. Now each of those could be used uh, in your photos to enhance them and that's why we're looking at that. So let's start with curves and open it with Photoshop. We'll just wait for that to load. Now, oh, I don't know how many years ago, uh, I would say the goal of photographers has always been, or traditionally has always been to get the color of the photo as natural to the scene as possible, unless you're adding a certain type of an effect. Um, it seems recently that photographers have been recognized or are given a lot of credit for creating older looking photos or vintage photos and and what I'm basing this off of is, is uh, apps like Instagram where the whole goal of Instagram it seems is to make your photo look aged and it's almost like people are mistaking that for somebody being a professional photographer by adding an Instagram effect. There's nothing wrong with that um, I just think that it has its place and we're going to look at how we can control uh, how much of an effect that we can add to our image. Like I said, it's really easy to just take an image and run it through a filter and you know, let the filter do all the work and take what we got and be happy with it and post it. But we're not really learning anything by doing that. The filter's doing all the work for us or the action's doing all the work for us. We don't have any real control over how our images become the way that they become. So I'm taking this photo here. Again, I take no credit for the images. I just found this on Google. And um, this is for educational purposes only. I took this photo off Google and I looked at it and I said, it's a great shot. You know, you got this couple in the forest, they're kissing. Everything's looking the way that it should be. The color is all bang on. I'm sure that's what it looked like to be there. I think it's great. But we're gonna use this photo as a candidate for our curves presentation. I would say most of, not necessarily all, but most of the Instagram type effects, the vintage type effects that you see out there are based on curves adjustments. And I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna to go to image adjustments and we're gonna to go to curves. It's the third one down. Photographers have been curves for as long as Photoshop's been around. So this is nothing new. Inside the curves menu, you'll notice this kind of graph and this is your histogram, which we'll talk about more later. We also have this diagonal line that cuts through it. Now, we could go and make adjustments to the RGB, which is going to affect all of our image. But what I want to do instead is make adjustments to each individual channel. And rather than starting with red, I'm going to start with blue. You'll notice that our histogram turns blue, and this is showing us all the blue values within this photo. This diagonal line can be manipulated and we can drag this bottom point over in the up or the down direction as however we want. And watch what happens. If I drag this up, look what's happening to our image. We are getting that hue shift that I was talking about in most popular sort of vintage plugins out there. We can also go up to the top right one and pull that down. That's going to make our photo look a lot more yellowy in the highlights area. Okay, the way the curves window works, this bottom corner is the shadows and this top corner is the highlights. All right, we can also add a curve to this. That's why it's called curves. We can click anywhere along this line and we can put a bit of a twist in it. If we want it more yellow, we'd pull it down. If we want it to be more bluish, we can kind of play around with that. What I really like about curves is that it gives you a lot of control over how those colors affect your final image. So you can see already we've added a real interesting tone to this overall image that's really changed the mood of this shot. Next we're going to go to the green channel. Now normally I don't recommend that you go through each channel the way that I am right now, but I'm just showing this for presentation purposes only. So I'm going to go to green, same deal here, let's pull it up, let's see what happens, it's going to go more green. 
If I pull it to the right, it's actually going to become less green, which means it's going to go more bluish and more reddish. Same with the highlights. If I pull it to the left, all right, I'm introducing more green into the highlight. If I pull it down, I'm introducing more red and blue into the highlights. All right, so I can just kind of find that sweet spot. I'm just going to tweak it again. If I want to go more reddish and more bluish, I pull it down a bit to lower the amount of green in the overall shot. Let's go to red. One last adjustment here. With the red, there's our red histogram. We're going to kind of pull this up and around, and you see that I can add more red, or I can take red out by pulling it over, and it becomes even more bluish, Okay, depending on what I want to go for here. And then I can do the same thing in the highlights, add more red to the highlights, or I can pull it out a little more, depending on what I like. And there we go. I'm going to hit OK. Now, let's look at the before and the after. There's the before, and there's the after. And depending on probably your age, uh, your experience in photography and all of that, you'll either say that this looks really bad because it's got a real ugly sort of blue hue to it, or you'll say, man, that looks really cool. Um, that looks a lot like the, um, you know, the Nashville uh, filter in Instagram. All right. No matter what you decide or what you think, um, a lot of photographers are using this. Okay, uh, Curves has been around for a long time and, and you can get very interesting mood type shots or um, mood effects by creating these kind of, um, by changing the tonal range of each channel. Okay, so let's save that. Let's save that as Curves. I'm going to save it to the desktop. Save. Make sure this is always slid all the way up. Okay, so that's good. Next we're going to go on to Lens Corrections. And let's open that up. Now just to review what we just did, first of all, great shot, nice color, very natural looking, uh, good composure, or good composition, very nice. Okay, but I am going to crop it. I'm going to go to the crop tool, five down, and I'm going to make sure that it's on rule of thirds up at the top here. And I'm just going to pull it over a bit because there's a little bit of dead space there on the side that uh, doesn't really need to be you know used as much so I'm gonna make it more of a rule of thirds type of a shot with her kind of going across the entire image okay so I cropped out some of that let's do the same let's kind of review what we just did with curves on this image we're gonna go image adjustments curves and I'm gonna kinda of change it up on this one I'm gonna go with the reds maybe first although usually I do like to affect the blues first. As you can see how it changes quite a bit if you, if you start with a different channel. All right, I'm gonna go to the blues. We're gonna tweak that. Okay, you can see how we can get these. I don't know what the term would be. I guess I, I call them porcelain type images where the skin kind of goes um, sort of a white. All right, kind of washed out a bit. Yeah, I'm just tweaking it a little bit. I'm not going crazy here, but I am going to give it that uh, vintage sort of effect here a bit. Whoops, I don't want to go crazy here. All right, maybe I'll just leave that. And uh, you know what? Hang on a sec. I want to take a little bit of red out because it seems really, really reddish right now. Okay, I'm just going to maybe go like that. I'm going to leave it like that, and I'm going to hit OK. Okay, so you can see we made a bit of an adjustment, you know, a lot to the color, obviously. And what I want to show you for this one is something called lens corrections. Now, we know about lens corrections in RAW because we do them all the time when we open up our RAW images, and there's actually a separate tutorial on that. Uh, we're going to go to filter lens corrections this time. And this is a very useful window that Photoshop comes with, uh, at least in my opinion, for a number of reasons. First of all, we're going to go to the third tool down. It's called the Move Grid tool. We're going to click that. And you're going to have a grid overlaid on your picture. I'm going to explain why that's important in a, in a bit here. Next, we're going to go over to the right-hand side and we're going to go to Custom. You'll see two tabs, Auto Correction and Custom. We're going to go to Custom. And the kind of the cool thing here is we've got this distortion, geometric distortion. We can pull it to the left to make our photo more fisheye. Ooh, 
That's horrible. Or we can go to the right and we can make it less fisheye. And you can see that it kind of distorts it inwards, okay, and kind of stretches out that background a bit. So I like that better. We're going to skip chromatic aberration. Uh, that's pretty technical. We'll talk about it another time maybe. Uh, with the vignette, we can pull it to the left and we can add a vignette, as you can see, to the edges. Pull to the right and we can add a white vignette. So left is darkening, right is lightening. We can also change the midpoint of that vignette. Okay, if we want it more pronounced or less pronounced, we can change that midpoint just like that. And one kind of cool thing here is the transform, the vertical perspective and the horizontal perspective. So with the vertical perspective, we can angle the top towards us or we can angle it away from us, like you see here, so that it looks like she's going kind of further into the background. We can also go with the horizontal and we can angle just one side, so it kind of looks like we're flipping the picture a bit, or rotating it towards us. We can go the other way, and it kind of looks like she's getting farther away from us. So I actually like it with her a little closer to, to us. For the angle and the scale, we're going to affect those in a different way. Don't mess with this because you're going to screw up your picture. Remember I turned on the grid here and there's one really useful tool that is overlooked here in the lens correction palette and it's called the straighten tool. It's right here. Great tool. Here's how it works. Click the straighten tool and let's look at where our horizon line is. You can kind of see that it's at an angle here. The photographer didn't shoot straight on. He had a bit of a curved uh, horizon. So we can correct that very quickly with the straightening tool just by clicking and drawing a line along the horizon. Just like that. And as you can see now, whoop, it looks like I didn't get it perfectly. That's what that grid is good for. That's better. You can see now that I've straightened out that horizon almost perfectly because I can see next to the grid, you know, how straight it is. Now if I want to purposely add a bit of a twist to my lens, which you know, adds a little more of a uh, dynamic to your picture, then you can really quickly and easily just kind of add a bit, of a bit of an angle as well. Okay, I can go more of an angle than I had in the original picture if I want. Right, that might be too much, so I can lessen it just by constantly drawing lines across. All right, that's actually pretty close to uh, where it was originally. So I'm just going to go a little more. And once I'm happy with that, I can hit OK. And we can see the difference is actually pretty huge. All right, we made a lot of adjustments there and we kind of tweaked, like I said, like I showed you there, the color and the actual lens correction itself. Um, one other thing that I see pretty popular is, um, is desaturating the colors as well. So if I go to image adjustments, hue and saturation, you know, I can pull out some of my saturation here to create kind of that desaturated look again that uh, is, seems to be trendy nowadays. Alright, so you can see where we started a beautiful photo and it ends up kind of looking interesting um, with those color corrections and with the lens correction. Alright, so it is a matter of personal preference. You have to start with a good shot before you can end up with something that looks uh, equally as good. And so I'm going to save this I'm going to call it lens correction. I'm going to put it on the desktop here. All right. Uh, okay. And okay. And now we're going to move on to the third file. It is called selective focus. And let's open that up. Okay. And so now with the selective focus file open, we're going to press command zero so we can see the entire image. And we looked at this in another video, um, but we're going to look at an easier way to create selective focus in an image. So here we got a great photo, a uh, nice portrait shot. And again, I don't mean to copy or to um, even repeat what's been done with the, you know, um, apps like Instagram and that. But one feature that seems to have got a lot of popularity is the, uh, the feature that you can choose a spot in the photo that stays in focus while the rest blurs out. And I call that selective focus. So we're going to do that with this image right here. 
Now with any portrait shot, uh, the emphasis should always be the eyes. So if you're gonna keep one thing in focus, I would try to keep the eyes nice and sharp and everything else if you wanna blur it out, depending on how much you wanna go, uh, you can change that after. So here's the easiest, fastest way to do it. We're gonna go to filter, we're going to go to blur, and we're gonna go to iris blur. It's going to take it into a separate window and we, you'll notice uh, with this uh, window that pops up we've got this elliptical shape that comes in and we got a center point where we can move this elliptical shape around. All right the center point is what's going to be in focus. You'll notice these next uh, set of dots we can pull those in all right and that is going to close in on the area that's in focus. And basically the distance between this point to the outer point, the elliptical that we, the ellipse that we see, is the point or the area that fades to blurriness. All right, it fades to a blur. We can also take the uh, edge of this. We can rotate it. We can isolate it so it's just on the face. All right, we can, what I did here is I matched the angle of the face. I can pull this out so more of the face is in focus. And then I can also use this wheel in the middle, this colored wheel, and I can click on that. I can increase the intensity of the blur so it's really pronounced. Or I can decrease the amount where the effect is just a slight bit of blur. You can also do all of these options on the side here as well with the blur, all right, rather than using this. But I find everything is here for you. You don't have to ever go over to the side here to use this. You can just make your adjustments right on the picture itself. Check it, make sure it looks good, and uh, be done with it. All right, so that's a very quick and easy effect. We ha now have the area we want in focus and the rest is going out to a blur. I probably went a little too much on this. I'm gonna pull it back a bit. All right, but again, if I was spending more time, I would make it as perfect as I could. And then with this one, it's a little different than your other uh, menus you might be used to. You've got the OK up at the top here. I'm gonna hit OK. And let it do its thing. And there we go. Now we got this model who has her eyes nicely in focus and everything else goes soft once it gets off of her face. Now this would be, you know, attempting to replicate kind of a, uh, you know, a small aperture setting where you've got the, the area of focus right on the face and everything else is kind of blurring out outside of that. Um, it's just a nice effect and it draws your eye more towards the model. Um, it, it's selectively focusing and, and drawing your eye towards the part of the model that you want to have the most emphasis, in this case, the face. So let's save that. And save it to the desktop as selective focus. Here we go, make sure this is up to 12 and hit OK. All right. And now we're going to look at the very last image here. We're gonna close this off. We're gonna take a look at the last one and that is rendered lighting. So let's open that with Photoshop. Here we go. Now for this example, what we're doing is um, we're looking at an image and let's say we thought that the lighting of the photo that we took didn't turn out as great or as you know how we wanted it to turn out. Uh, maybe we thought in this case that it was just too bright. Even though this photo is taken beautifully, uh, let's say we wanted to change the lighting in the shot or add more dramatic lighting to the shot um, that we hadn't done earlier. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to render, and we're gonna go to lighting effects. And this is a fantastic addition to Photoshop um, that now gives us a lot of control over the lights in our scene. I'm just gonna delete the ones that I was using before. I'm gonna start right from scratch. First thing you can do is start with a preset. That's probably the easiest way to get started with this. Go to preset, scroll up, and I would choose flashlight. All right, flashlight is a very easy to understand sort of a light. Um, it's just a point of light that shines like a flashlight on your subject and you can move it wherever you want. Now you notice when we put on her face, let's put this on her face, it's really bright and it's blowing out all the detail in her face. So same as the um, blur, the iris blur, 
we have this little wheel where we can lower the intensity or raise the intensity as much as we want. And we also have another option here. You'll notice that there's a green circle, all right? And the green circle shows us how big the flashlight is before it starts to, to fall off, before it starts to fade out. What we can do is if we put our mouse directly on the green line, it'll turn into a yellow line. And then we can click and we can increase the size of the flashlight or decrease the size depending on what we want to do and get it more to fit the shape of our face. Again, it gives you a lot of control. Now we have this nice vignette that fades out on the side. We're not going to stop there. I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to go way more, um, add way more lights than I would ever do on a regular photo, but I just want to show you how this works. With this new um, rendered lighting uh, interface, we can add more than one light. Up at the top, we got three options. We just added a point light, which is what a flashlight is. We can add a spotlight. So let's look at that one next. Click the spotlight, add new spotlight. And you'll notice that it adds a second light. And we can just move this over. I'm going to have it coming in from the corner. And this one has different options. This one looks like it's coming from a certain direction. And, you know, either focusing on your subject or on the background, whatever. We can do a number of things. We can change how wide the fall off is on the actual spotlight itself. The intensity of the, the spotlight itself. We can change how far the light extends across the photo. All right, we got a couple more options here. Now this is if you want directional light. This is if you want light to look like it's coming from a certain direction. And um, obviously that's what a spotlight is good for. I'm gonna just lower my intensity a bit. All right, and another cool thing that you could do with any of the lights, I'm gonna do it with the spotlight here, is I can make it look like I've added a gel. And a gel is basically a color that you put in front of the light, uh, usually a piece of cellophane, um, to give the color a different mood. All right, so in this case, I can just click color. And I'm going to choose kind of a bluish tint to the light. And there we go. I find that lighter colors work better, more natural. This, this starts to look really fake. All right, you want to kind of go with lighter tints and hit OK. So there we go. Now, the cool thing about this is Photoshop is tracking all of the lights that we're using. So we can always go back over on the right-hand side, just like your layers. We can click the point light. We can go back there. We can make adjustments. Let's say we want to make it more intense. We want to change the color of it, whatever. We can do this now. We can go back to the spotlight and we can do the same thing, make adjustments to it. You know, we want to make it brighter or whatever, or uh, change the quality of the light as well, which I won't talk about too much in this tutorial. Um, we can do that. We can make any changes we want to the light at any point. Next, we're going to look at one last light, and this is called infinite light. And infinite light is kind of interesting. When I click it, my picture is going to go insanely bright. So when I click it, look at that. It goes really bright. But what infinite light is supposed to show or is supposed to replicate is a constant light source, kind of like the sun. So it's almost like ambient light. And if I click this little, it looks like a little pin, if I click that and I pull it, you get kind of this 3D effect where you can choose the direction of the light. All right, so I'm going to line it up with my spotlight because that looks like where the light might be coming from. And I'm going to pull it back so that it adds a little bit of light to the overall scene. And that's the point of it. Uh, you're supposed to add some ambient light. And ambient light is light that is throughout the scene. All right, it's lighting the entire scene throughout the scene. We can also change the intensity. We can make it more brighter, less brighter, very quickly and easily. What I like about the infinite light is if we add a color to it, or I'm going to go with a yellow in this case, it affects the color of the entire picture. All right, whatever we decide is a good color option here for this light, because it's ambient and it's throughout the entire picture, it's going to kind of add a tint to everything. We can hit OK. All right, so we looked at kind of all the different features here. You can go and play with each of the uh, sliders to see what they do and how they change your image. Okay, each one kind of changes the brightness and contrast of the image a little differently. You can also add a texture, although I don't think it's going to work good in this case. Right here, we can add a texture to one of the channels. You can see how it brings out the details in her face and in the wood but it looks pretty fakey. 
I wouldn't use it in this case, so I'm going to go back to none. And like I said, you can experiment. And like the big strength of this um, tool or this filter is that you can go back and you can change any of your lights as you're making them. And when you're happy with the end result, you can hit OK. And now it gets applied to your image. All right, so if we look at our photo, what we started with, compared to what we ended with, I'm not saying that it's better. I'm just saying that we have really altered the lighting in that scene. All right, it gave us a chance to change to a, maybe a more dynamic lighting, to make more interesting lighting, uh, rather than what we were you know, stuck with in the photo. Now, sometimes it looks fake. All right, if you use it in, a pro, you know, in, in the wrong way, you got lights coming from the wrong direction, you got light sources and reflections coming from the wrong way, it's going to look fake. And this example here is actually pretty extreme and it does look fake. However, I just want to show you guys how to use it and hopefully you can use it in your work as well um, to add dynamic lighting or, or uh, creative lighting at some point. So let's save this, go save as, I'm going to call it rendered lighting to the desktop. I'm going to save it, okay, I always make sure this is all the way to, to full. And we're done. All right, so hopefully you learned a few things, talked about curves, we talked about selective focus, we looked at lens corrections and rendered light. All of these things can be used in your photos to enhance them, to make them more interesting, to add some, some interest, overall interest to your shot. So I hope you use them. Till next time, good luck.